what I want to do is get into a four tenths motor. Um, the fact that we have the same motor, all right, running um, at different torque levels, okay. They're both close to each other and comparable in speed, where we're running 25 and 30,000 RPM here, and we can run up to 20,000 RPM here, all right. But what we have here is we offer two different tools that run similar product, yet they're as different as night and day, all right. We have a gearless tool or a gearless motor. All right. Now this tool, as you can see, it's not completely right angle. It's seven degree offset. Um, this is your gearless model. A gearless tool, generally speaking, will be higher in speed and lower in torque under load. Okay. Um, it's got a lot of advantages compared to a bright angle bevel geared tool. Primarily the price, first of all would be 60 70 80 dollars lower in list price right. so economically it makes a lot of sense um, it doesn't have the right angle bevel gear sets in it so the number one cost in a repair is replacing those gears doesn't happen here all right so you're eliminating that cost so your maintenance costs and repair costs are much lower than it would be with the right angle tool. Now because you don't have that gear mesh taking place, the noise levels of this tool are much lower. All right, so another ergonomic factor here. So we're talking economically, it's, it's a little bit better off from a standard list price, from a maintenance cost or repair cost, and now we're getting into ergonomic features or advantages based on the fact that noise levels are lower, okay, and the fact that Again, that mesh isn't taking place, your vibration ratings will be a lot lower. If you ever get to a point where customers want to see our vibration specs, we can give them to you. They're on our website. Just go to the website and look under vibration testing and you'll see specific model numbers. We're not afraid. It's not proprietary information. So we'll give that information out. Anytime we can get health and safety involved with our product, we feel we have an advantage, all right? So look to get those people involved in our product. When we go out and say we make the best, it's the best because of those reasons. It feels good in the hand, it performs well at um, certain ratings that are approved by ANSI and OSHA, so we're very comfortable with where we stand ergonomically when you start comparing our product to uh, you know, other tool manufacturers. Um, so, ergonomically, economically, great, great product. I consider this a tool that I would always lead with or show what I'm going to call soft product on this. And by soft product, I mean non-woven, all right? So here's a non-woven product. We're going to blend and polish with this. Um, again, this is high speed and low torque, so it's not, um, it's not really a tool that you want to put a 36 grit disc on it and try and really take material down with. That's where the geared tool comes in. But anything that's running soft product, whether again it's non-woven, unitized, all right, um, bristle discs, any of those types of soft products that are used to clean and polish, outstanding. Okay. Any questions about the gearless? Now. The fact that it's seven degree offset helps the operator from a position standpoint. It puts his wrist and forearm in a more uh, user friendly type of position. Abrasive people will tell you to attack the weld or run this tool at a 15 degree kind of tilt. So if I'm creating seven degrees of that already by the design of the tool, I'm just about halfway there. So um, it's a much more user friendly product based on your natural grip and the way you're going to be using the tool. The next thing is the geared tool. Beveled, right angle, and gears. All right, that's the gearless, and you can see the direct drive motor. It's right in the head. Here's the gear-driven tool. Now you're going to see what a beveled gear looks like. Those two pieces that create that right angle, you can see where the teeth kind of mesh with each other. That's your beveled right angle gears. The gear tool, um, Lower in speed, 
much more torque under load. You are going to uh, make, you got to make sure that you're going apples to apples with the customer. All right. Uh, if you, if torque is critical and you're selling your customer a lot of 36 grit or 40 grit discs, it's telling you that they're trying to remove stock compared to selling them, you know, a couple hundred non-woven discs. That's telling you they're blending or polishing. So if I know the customer is removing product, this is the tool that I'm going to lead with. All right. Um, Again, it's a four tenths motor, the beveled angle right gears, and the, the thing when we start comparing this to other right angle geared tools, the advantages that this tool has is number one, the gear life. Um, we get about two to two and a half times the life compared to other uh, geared tools that are out there. And the main reason that we do that is because of what we call our dual wick system. That's our lubricating system that we use to make sure that the tool's getting the lubrication it needs. These pieces right here, those are your dual wicks. Okay? They act as a sponge or a reservoir. You can see how loose they are. Um, what happens is that you put in gear oil. This comes in the box with every tool that you purchase. So you receive the tube of gear oil plus the uh, applicator gun. And wherever you see a W stamped on the top of the housing, right where the grease fitting is, that's telling you that there is a wick system involved. All right? So wherever you see that W, we're using this type of lubrication to help with that gear set. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to hit it with like two to three plunges, primarily for every eight hours of run time. If you have customers that are complaining that the, the head of this tool is hot or overheated, it's because they're probably not using gear oil. They're putting air tool oil in, but they're forgetting to apply your gear oil to the gear set. All right. Um, once we get to that point, these wicks hold that moisture and hold, or lubrication in place um, until tool starts to spin and then centrifugal force will draw the lubricant onto the gear set. If you were to use a uh, lubricant that's a little bit thicker in viscosity, what happens is it goes in, it sits on the gear set and then when the gears start to spin, it slings the lubricant off. So it ends up on the inner you know, walls or race of the housing and not on the gears. So what's going to happen if there's no lubrication on the gears? Heat and buildup. So that really helps uh, prolong the life of our gear set. The gearless tool will always have less torque under load. The geared tool will always give you a little bit more oomph um, under, under load.